Hi everyone, it's James here from Production Expert and I have always wanted to start a video by popping up from behind a box of this size. In here is the Imperative Audio Portable Vocal Booth. We're going to do some recording inside the PVB, the Portable Vocal Booth, and then we'll do some recording outside so you can hear just how much effect this thing is happening. What I'll also do is I'll leave a microphone outside the PVB, the portable vocal booth, so you can hear how much sound is escaping from it out into the real world. This thing is designed so you can have a real vocal booth sound without having something actually physically sitting on your shoulders like the Isovox does, but it's portable, it's transportable, don't get me wrong, it's a sizable chunk of thing, but when you see it set up, I'm pretty sure you'll be impressed. Depending on how you're gonna be using the PVB, they've actually cut a slit into the acoustic material and into the metalwork, so you could slide a microphone stand through there if you really wanted to. Um, something heavy duty like a latch lake would work really well there. Um, drop your microphone down and have it come down from the front. Alternatively, like I'm gonna be doing, the microphone stand could be in front of you. So here we go, it's built, it's up, and it's in the living room. And it's quite a sizable thing. So if you're, um, how can I say this, petite of stature, um, short, then you might need to get someone else to help you because physically manhandling this thing, or should I say person handling this thing to be politically correct, um, it is quite a big thing. It's not horrifically heavy, it's all doable by one person, but the most difficult thing I found was getting it out of all the packaging because it's all stuck in very, very carefully. And if you were moving it a lot, you probably would want to keep the foam just to keep it all nice and safe and snug. The metal paintwork finish is really nice. It's a nice thing, you know. It's, as vocal booths go, not enormous. It definitely is what I would call portable. The fact that you can sling it on your shoulder if you've got shoulders like Arnie, then you know, it's not a bad thing. It doesn't feel claustrophobic in here. Um, we get the nice music stand, which is great. That all mounts nicely. Um, the studio spares light, nice. And yeah, it's just a really nice place to be. So the next thing to do is to do some recording. So first up, I'm gonna record a vocal and you'll hear the vocal mic inside here with me singing. Then I'll bring the vocal mic out here and you'll hear room tone and room noise and reflections and stuff. This is not a treated room, this is my living room. There is a sofa and curtains and sort of a carpet, but it's all solid walls, um, wood floor. So you're gonna get reflections. You're gonna get, um, well, normal house noise, I guess. Then what I'll do is I'll sing that way, but I'll put the decent mic, the condenser mic out here so you can hear and I'll sort of turn around. So you'll get an idea of how much this is actually isolating you from the outside world. Unlike something like the Isovox, where I think the Isovox is designed to keep the noise in. Obviously, it will improve the tone getting to the microphone. You won't get so much room tone or reverberation. This thing is very much about quality of sound. It's about keeping the sound nice in here. So it'll be interesting to find out how much sound gets out to the microphone when I'm kind of talking or singing that way and then this way and compare the two. You'll get where we're going. So I've got a large diaphragm condenser mic set up in here. This is the Simple Way Mic 1, one of my favorites for VO and vocals and just a good all-rounder. And I'm gonna sing into this. Uh, it's about, ooh, probably I'd say six to eight inches off the phone. It's all a lovely acoustic pyramid type phone, anechoic chamber type shape. Um, very lovely. It's just a really nice place to be. I don't feel claustrophobic. Yes, we've got the lid on, but actually it just sounds really nice. I suspect you can probably even tell the difference when my mic is on, I'm on the uh, lav mic right now. The difference between my voice out here and in here. I, certainly I can hear the difference in my voice in here, which kind of makes sense. So let's try some vocals and see what we get. Talk to her, talk to him. Let the whispering begin. Make it big, make it bold. And the story will unfold. Pass it on, pass it out. At the element of doubt. Talk to her, talk to him. It's a game of Chinese whispers. 
Talk to her, talk to him, let the whispering begin. Make it big, make it bold, and the story will unfold. Pass it on, pass it out, at the element of doubt. Talk to her, talk to him, it's a game of Chinese whispers. So this time, I'm going to sing that way, but the mic's out in the room, and then I'll turn around so you'll hear the difference in tone. Uh, I'll turn the loud mic off, obviously, and you'll hear exactly what this thing's doing. Talk to her, talk to him, let the whispering begin. Make it big, make it bold, and the story will unfold. Pass it on, pass it out, at the element of doubt. Talk to her, talk to him, it's a game of Chinese whispers. Definitely one of the most bizarre recording sessions I've ever done. I want to try one last recording. Now we know that microphones generally, so certainly cardioid microphones, are more sensitive from this way. And the issue that we normally have is that microphones are picking up the sound from behind you and around you. Obviously, cardioid mics are not picking up so much from behind. So let's try another take of this vocal and let's see and hear the difference. See if there's any. Talk to her, talk to him, let the whispering begin. Make it big, make it bold, and the story will unfold. Pass it on, pass it out, at the element of doubt. Talk to her, talk to him, it's a game of Chinese whispers.